why'd she eat your hair? I don't know. Cause she she, she wanted to she wanted to eat it because she was hungry for hair. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 banned kids toys. There were actually 6,100 lawn dart injuries treated in the nation's hospital emergency rooms since 1978. For this list, we'll be looking at various toys meant for children that were eventually banned from sale. Do you remember any of these toys? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Toothpick Crossbows. Is that a crossbow? <laughs> ah! Oh! It is a crossbow! In the mid-2010s, a toothpick crossbow craze was sweeping Chinese schools. Selling online and in shops for as little as 7 yuan, these so-called toothpick crossbows were originally designed to shoot out just that. Toothpicks. As their name suggests, these were mini crossbows that were meant to shoot toothpicks at various objects, usually friends. But as you can imagine, shooting sharp pieces of wood into your friends' faces can be quite dangerous. Not only that, but there were alleged reports of children using the crossbow to fire the likes of nails and needles. These toothpick crossbows have become a new favorite among Chinese children, but it seems some have already been exposed to the potential dangers. Parents raised concerns and the law swiftly answered by banning the sale of toothpick crossbows across the country. Many major retailers were ordered to take the toy off their shelves and raids were carried out by law enforcement to ensure that retailers were complying with the ban. Number 19, Rollerblade Barbie. I skate, you skate, we both got clothes that look great. We don't know what Mattel was thinking with Rollerblade Barbie. This doll was obviously meant to rollerblade around the room, and to do so, the manufacturer equipped her feet with rolling contraptions that acted like cigarette lighters. They were even designed to kick up sparks. All right, this is Rocket Skates, take two. Of course, there were reports of injuries. In Jackson, Mississippi, a young girl accidentally set her brother on fire after playing with a combination of hairspray and rollerblade Barbie. Luckily, the child wasn't seriously injured. Mattel realized that they had a serious problem and potential lawsuit on their hands, so they quickly ceased production on rollerblade Barbie. That was probably a good idea. Number 18. Mini Hammocks You know who invented the hammock, Homer? No. That's something for you to do. Find that out. Manufacturers realized that hammocks weren't really made for children, yet children loved to hang in them. So they had the idea to make mini hammocks suited exclusively for tiny bodies. There was just one problem, and we mean one major problem. Hammocks contain what are called spreader bars, and these bars keep hammocks from folding in on themselves. These mini hammocks did not have spreader bars so they were prone to entangling and strangling children. Unfortunately, many children and teenagers died in tragic hammock-related accidents, and one child reportedly suffered brain damage. These specific mini hammocks were eventually recalled, with more than 3 million being taken off the country's shelves. Number 17. Hannah Montana Pop Star Card Game Hannah Montana was all the rage in the mid-2000s, having debuted in March of 2006. <laughs> Love you, Anna Montana. All sorts of merchandise was made up to capitalize on its success, including a playing card game. Sounds innocent, except that the cards contained a dangerously high amount of lead. Lead-based toys! Lead-based toys! In 2007, thousands of children's toys were tested for lead, specifically lead paint. Kathy Jenkins owns Toys in the Attic. After hearing recent reports of lead found in toys from China, she decided to offer free lead testing to anyone who wanted to bring their toys by. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends no more than 40 parts per million, and 600 parts per million is the federally mandated level for a mandatory recall. It was found that the Hannah Montana cards contain levels of 3,056 parts per million, about five times higher than the recall limit. Suffice to say, you can no longer find these cards anywhere. Number 16. Slingshots While not exclusively made for children, slingshots have long been used by them. For some, it's an introductory weapon. Hey, Sonny, come here. What is it? What's the matter? Huh? Let me have that. 
For others, it's a relatively harmless toy used to shoot chestnuts at soda cans or whatever. Of course, there is a huge risk factor inherent with slingshots. As a result, arm-braced slingshots are banned in many jurisdictions. For example, the state of New York has banned slingshots under criminal possession of a weapon in the fourth degree. Also grouped with slingshots are the likes of electric dart guns, switchblade knives, and brass knuckles. Possession of arm-braced slingshots is a Class A misdemeanor and can land the owner in prison for a year. Number 15. Fisher-Price Power Wheels Come on, let's go! Sitting tall in my Power Wheels, star of the show! In the late 90s, Fisher-Price manufactured various models of ride-on cars and trucks for children. They were called Power Wheels, and they allowed little ones to get a taste of the road long before they could obtain a driver's license. However, these Power Wheels cars were horribly designed, to say the least. Some of them failed to stop, causing children to plow into walls and get hurt. 44,000 hot pink Barbie Dream Campers are recalled. This after 17 reports of the battery-powered wheels continuing to run even after the foot pedal was released. But even worse were the faulty electrical components. There were hundreds of reports of these toy cars overheating and catching fire, and they caused upwards of $300,000 in property damage. Power wheels were eventually recalled. And just a few years later, Fisher-Price faced a $1.1 million fine from the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Number 14. Aqua Leisure Baby Floats Pool flotation devices are certainly nothing new. I would say that I'm just drifting here in the pool. Why? Well, it's very comfortable just to drift here. Unfortunately, young children in open water don't often make for the safest combination. In the late 2000s, manufacturer Aqua Leisure issued a voluntary recall over their defective baby floats. Swim school baby boats consider every detail for safe water play. Ensuring your baby is comfortable is foremost. The seats were prone to tearing, causing babies and young children to fall through the flotation device and into the water. More than 30 such incidents were officially reported, but thankfully, no one was seriously injured or killed. Aqua Leisure eventually notified the Consumer Product Safety Commission, but at that point, more than 20 reports had already been issued. As a result, the CPSC slapped the company with a civil penalty of $650,000. Number 13. Hoverboards The future of movement a hoverboard. I don't understand those things. Is walking really so hard for you? These self-balancing scooters were all the rage in the mid-2010s. Unfortunately, also generated quite a degree of controversy, not only for being fake hoverboards, but because they were incredibly dangerous. Not only were inexperienced users falling off and hurting themselves, but the batteries were notoriously awful and prone to bursting into flames. These scooters were blamed for dozens of residential fires and deaths, and as a result, they have been banned in numerous places across the world. The MTA is banning hoverboards because they say the lithium-ion batteries pose a potential fire risk. Many public spaces have prohibited the use of hoverboards, and places like New York City, the Netherlands, and Hong Kong have banned their use outright. Various imports have also been banned by the U.S. International Trade Commission for infringing on copyright laws. Number 12. CSI Fingerprint Kit This is one particularly tragic case that can have enormous repercussions in a couple of decades. In the mid-2000s, a specific CSI toolkit allowed children to dust for fingerprints. Unfortunately, the powder that was used in the test kit contained a very dangerous type of asbestos called tremolite. In fact, it's believed that even a one-time exposure to this type of asbestos can cause lung cancer later in life. The toxicant was found in six of eight samples tested by the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization during a five-month examination. The Department of Consumer Protection ordered the manufacturer to recall the product, but who knows how many children had already been affected. Manufacturer Planet Toys Incorporated eventually went bankrupt, and a class action lawsuit was launched seeking damages. Number 11. Gilbert Glass Blowing Set it doesn't take a genius to work out that children in glass blowing do not mix. Oh, my pants are on fire! My underwear is on fire! I'm on fire! Why anyone thought this would be a good idea is beyond us. 
Glass blowing is an incredibly dangerous trade, requiring the maker to work with literal molten glass, as in glass that appears bright orange because it's 2,000 degrees. Good morning, glass blowers. Is everyone ready to play with fire? Yeah. yeah. This is dangerous for the pros, never mind children who have no idea what they're doing. This Gilbert glass blowing set encouraged children to try the practice for themselves. We don't even want to think about the consequences. Unsurprisingly, this toy was eventually pulled and is now regarded as nothing more than an insane experiment. Number 10. Sky Dancers Who would have thought something so cute would get yanked off the shelf? Released in 1994, these skinny plastic dolls came with foam wings and a little base to set her in. When you pulled the string on the back, the wings would spin like a helicopter and the doll would fly into the air. Wow, she's flying! Sky dancers fly, fly just for you. Pretty sky dancers fly for me too. You make her dance and fly. Incredibly popular at the time, the toys were given a recall due to the unpredictable nature of how they flew. Careful, kid. He might poke your eye out. Repeated eye injuries, broken teeth, blindness, and even severe cuts were all caused by the out-of-control spinning dolls. Number 9. Atomic Lab Kits Sold in the 1950s, the Gilbert U-238 Atomic Energy Lab gave kids the radioactive material needed to unleash nuclear and chemical reactions. From the lens of a 21st century parent, you'd question how anyone ever thought this was a good idea. My name is Sheldon Cooper and I'm trying to build a nuclear reactor and I could use his help. Included in the sets were compounds that emitted beta and gamma rays, both of which are radioactive. It was pitched as being completely safe as long as you followed the instructions carefully, which we all know kids do so well. Vent radioactive gas. N. Thankfully, the $50 price tag was far too high to make it attractive in those days, forcing it off store shelves before it even sold 5,000 kits. Number 8. Clackers For the 1960s, the concept was fairly simple. Take two balls and attach them to a string, and children can swing them around. When they collide, they make a big clacking sound, which the kids will adore. Unbreakable miracle clackers are for everyone, even the little guys. It was all fine and dandy until the balls started exploding. With enough force applied, the collision would cause the balls to shatter, sending shards of glass or plastic in any direction. The new original miracle clackers won't shatter, even if you use both hands. Reports of facial and other injuries caused the toy to be pulled from the market before resurfacing again in the 1990s. More modern materials prevented the exploding balls from hurting anyone further. Number 7. Bucky Balls You can market it to older kids all you want. The magnets can adhere to each other and then it can cause intestinal injury or damage. That's not going to stop the younger ones from playing with them. Bucky balls were a set of small, powerful magnets that would stick together to form various shapes. Each magnet was about 5 millimeters wide, just small enough for a young kid to swallow. The company and CPSC have been warning for a long time. This is a product not intended for kids, yet the incidents still happen. Countless reports of children ingesting the magnets caused a recall on the toy in 2012 forcing the company to issue $375,000 worth of refunds. This x-ray shows a ring of 18 Buckyballs lodged in his stomach. That didn't, however, stop Buckyballs founder Craig Zucker from trying again. Specs are essentially the same toy with a new name and logo. Number 6. Yo-Yo Water Balls Have you ever played with a paddle ball? You know, that rubber ball attached to a string with a paddle? Now imagine your hand is the paddle, the string is a bungee cord, and the ball contains a nondescript fluid. That's the concept behind the yo-yo ball. It sounded innocent enough, but many issues have arisen from it. There was, of course, the potential choking hazard it posed if the cord was wrapped around you in the wrong way. The material it was made of was also highly flammable. If pulled too far, the snap back could be quite painful, and the liquid in the ball was toxic. Everything about this bouncing ball said it needed to come off shelves. I'll bounce back. I always bounce back. Number 5. Kite Tubes When you're done watching this video, search YouTube for Kite Tube Fail 
and you'll see exactly why this kind of toy has no business on store shelves. It's essentially a modified inner tube designed to catch air while being dragged behind a boat. Once airborne, neither the boat driver or the passengers had any control over how the tube would react to the air current. Hello? Mrs. Pummelhorst? I'd like to get down now. In many cases, it would flip or turn suddenly, forcefully ejecting its passengers into the air. Broken bones, punctured lungs, and damaged eardrums were all injuries sustained as a result of the violent crash back into the water. Oh, Elvis has left the building! The kite was quickly recalled and flying boat tubes were made illegal. Number 4. Snack Time Cabbage Patch Kid no one would ever argue that Cabbage Patch Kids were a huge wave in the toy industry, but not every new doll was a success. She's my Cabbage Patch Snack Time Kid, she really loves to snack. Wow, she really chews! Released in 1996, the Snack Time Kid was intended to allow children to feed their doll any number of plastic treats. Innocent at first, kids quickly discovered the mouth wouldn't stop until whatever it ate was fully immersed in their little friend. Combine that with an overpowered motor, kids were getting their fingers and hair stuck in the dolls, with no way to stop them from eating. After I got the battery, I had to see if I could, you know, push a button or something, a lever, and pull the hair back through. But as the hair went in, it, it intertwined into the gear, and then it was, you couldn't get it out. By 1997, Mattel gave up on the hungry, hungry hippo-like doll and offered refunds to parents who had purchased the product. If you pulled on the doll, it only grabbed more, and it was pulling her hair away from her scalp. Number 3. Austin Magic Pistol Say what you want about toy guns, but they have been a staple of the toy industry for as long as guns have been around. But for a brief time in the late 1940s, this Magic Pistol was no ordinary play firearm. Using a combination of calcium carbide and water, the gun would propel ping-pong-sized balls from the barrel for distances well over 70 feet. Oh, that was a good one. The biggest problem with this toy was the fact that it gave children access to a literal explosive compound that could go off with as little as a couple of drops of sweat. Combine that with the splash of sparks that often erupted from the weapon, everything about this toy spelled dangerous. Number 2. Aquadots Similar in some ways to today's perler beads, aquadots, also known as bindies, are small beads that can be used to create creative designs on small pegboards. The magical dots you create spray and play! Like other swallow hazard toys, younger children would accidentally ingest the beads. That wasn't, however, what triggered the ban and subsequent massive recall. The complete Super Studio playset includes the pop and load bin, the speed dryer, the aqua sprayer. The beads were made of butane diol, which, when ingested, converts to a sedative known as GHB or gamma hydroxybutyric acid. Incidents of children swallowing and suffering adverse effects were widely reported. He just started weaving, kind of like he was drunk or something and he fell down. Concerns were also addressed about the beads being used as a recreational drug. The ingredients were eventually replaced with safer ones, allowing the toy to be brought back to store shelves. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Lawn Darts It was on April 5th, 1987 that David Snow's world fell apart. And you thought getting hit with a regular dart was bad. Lawn darts were a staple of outdoor games for many years. Shaped like their smaller counterpart, the metal pointed ends were quite heavy. Propelled by hand into the air in an arch to hit a circle target, the darts would have been harmless if they had only hit the grass. By afternoon, she was in a coma. Thousands of injuries from lacerations, concussions, and even death were reportedly tied to the unsafe usage of this outdoor field game. When they drop from 15 feet, when they hit, this is 23,000 pounds per square inch. They were banned in the U.S. in 1988 and then in Canada in 1989. Less dangerous substitutes have since been released, all with no metal tips. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. 
and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.